Hey, what's going on guys? I got Chef PV here, uh, Zero Ground FPV. I wanted to show you guys a quick rainy day project that I just did today. Thanks to uh, teammate Crux, Ryan Taylor. Uh, thanks, homie, for the idea, obviously, and sparking the whole what I could do today. So we have a 3S LiPo. We have the wall plug that came with our Weller um, WPS 18MP. This is a horrible iron to be working with that's a main iron. Uh, very, very bad. Uh, it's only 18 watts, and if you don't understand what wattage is, you need at least 30 to 40 watts, I'd say, and a good 60 to 90 is, is ideal in soldering major components like XT60 connectors. And the wattage can be related a lot like the amps in a battery. So your soldering iron, you want to have a lot of wattage so it can push more heat back into the tip as you use it. You literally use the heat from the tip as you solder. So every time you take solder off, it takes heat. Every time you touch wires, it takes heat. And the amount of um, wattage determines how quickly and how stable it can keep the heat as you solder. So if you're having problems getting solder to flow properly, it's probably because it's a low watt iron on a very high um, dissipating heat like wire, like a, a large 12 gauge or a big brass fitting on an XT60. So, um, but that all being said, that's a whole nother discussion. This Weller iron that I've had sitting in my box for a while has always been my portable iron, but I've had to use a wall plug. Um, recently, Crux, um, a couple days ago, said he threw a Lifey 3S pack on one. And a Lifey 3S is 9 volts, 9 point something. So um, we knew it worked. And so I started thinking, what if I just threw a regular 3S 12 volt pack on it? I've got these crappy Flurions that I bought really early on that come to find out are just horrible packs. Um, but I use them for ground stations and powering different things. So why not just be able to use this um, to power this in a jam out in the field? So I drew back on something I did a long, long time ago with an LCD screen, which was I took the wall plug and I cut it close to the, to the wall plug because I don't need very much there and put an XT60 on both ends. So now I can plug this end into the 3S battery and the barrel plug is now powered and I can now plug that in there and you'll see how quick this thing heats up from cold while we talk. So when it turns green, it's ready. Um, so now I'm powering this thing off 12 volts. Now I've let it sit here on the bench for about 20 minutes um, with this 12 volt battery hooked up. It's fine. It has not burnt anything. There's no extra heat. So I'm assuming the components can handle the 12 volts. Most 9 volt um, items out there will handle 12 volts just fine. Um, that being said, I would recommend using 9 volts and only 9 volts. However you want to achieve that, and there you go, it's green. What was that, like 30 seconds? Um, I now have an iron that's ready to go. In fact, I'll show you. Got a board right here. We'll uh, melt some solder. Woo, there you go. Let's see. Let's try and get it close enough for you to... There you go, it's melting the solder just fine. One, two, there it goes. One, two, there it goes. Two seconds and it's melting the solder points, so we're good. Um, like I said, I've left it, I've tested it. It doesn't overpower it. It's not going to cause any component breakdown that I've seen. Um, that being said, again, um, I would only put 9 volts to it. I'm not telling you to put 12 volts to it. Um, so, yeah, there you go. When you are doing this, just note that I can power it off, by the way, without having to unplug it. Um, the other great thing about this is it's actually cool to the touch right here. You can disassemble this thing down into just the handle and the tip, and it makes it great for taking along with you. So those three things right there, this wire, and I can solder a small bundle of solder probably, um, and I could really get away with just that. Uh, anyways. U.S. plugs, yes, they are essentially all the same. However, never, ever trust the markings on any plugs. Always test with a voltmeter. On most U.S. plugs, however, you will see a broken white line on one wire. That will be your negative. Um, the positive will be the other one. Hey. I'm done. Cool. Parker's done with the Santa's list. We're going to go over it in a minute. Um, 
And always just check the polarity. So what I did was I plugged this thing into the wall to begin with, and then I used my voltmeter and I checked the barrel. Inside the barrel was positive as normal. Um, outside was negative again most of the time. Um, and so that's how I determined my wires. I didn't cut the wires. I then plugged them into the XT60 on the battery and then checked the barrel again with them hooked up the way that I thought they should be. Sure enough, they were. So then I soldered all the plugs on. I didn't show you guys soldering plugs because you guys can figure that out. Um, but there you go. How to turn a Weller WPS 18 MP or any kind of 9 to 12 volt battery um, our DC operated uh, hand solder into a, a field kit. Alright guys, fly safe, fly smart.